Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and we're going to be going over the best junglers for every elo. The champs in the league are not one size fits all. Different picks get wildly different results depending on the skill bracket that you're in. To get an idea of what I mean, you can just compare the stats of pro play to those of solo queue. Since worlds just happened, let's just use that as a pro play stats. Sejuani, Graves, and Viego were all the three highest presence junglers at worlds, with them having 76, 74, and 60% win rates respectively. Graves didn't actually do super great, with just a 48% win rate, which is actually close to his solo queue stats. I'm honestly not too sure what the obsession is with Graves. Whether it's Iron, Diamond, or the world stage, I think the pick is overrated, but he's kind of fun, so maybe. But let's look at the other two picks. Sejuani had a 58% win rate, while Viego's was at a 63%. Sejuani isn't quite that OP in solo queue, but she's still definitely a good pick. Viego, on the other hand, is pretty bad. His win rate is below 49% across all ranks. Despite that, the fanboys can't stop trying to be their favorite pro player. He's still the most popular champion in the world, with around an 11.5% pick rate in solo queue. So what gives? The pros make him look absolutely busted, so why is he doing so bad on the ladder? Well, there are two general reasons that an objectively good champion can do well in pro play in higher ranks and do really poorly outside of that. The first is the champion is too mechanically difficult for the average player in a given rank. The other is that the champ needs a team to play around him, and that's not just a reliable thing in solo queue. Again, back to Viego. Mechanically, Viego himself is pretty simple. Aside from buffering certain things with his ultimate, you can't really mess anything up. And then there's his passive. I'd be willing to bet that more than 99% of players can't actually use Vigo's passive to its full potential. Because to do that, you need to be able to play every single other champion in the game to your ELO skill level. And that even applies to a lot of Grandmaster and Challenger level players. Okay, so we talked about why a champion may be bad, but what actually makes ones good? Well, for one, obviously the champion has to be suited to the mechanics of the players in that certain ELO. For example, Garen is super simple, and is a champion that does well at all levels of the ladder. The Bronze player can pretty reliably pull off his full combo. Meanwhile, up in Masters Plus, you're more likely to see a lot of Fioras and Camilles like in straight up 1v9 games with insane mechanics. But there's another really big factor that a lot of people don't realize. Everyone knows that League has a general meta to it depending on the overall state of the game. If Enchanters are OP, then Hyper Carriers are probably also OP. If these bot laners are OP, then Assassins tend to be weak, and Tanks tend to be strong, since they can frontline for those hyper carries. But a less thought out concept is that different skill levels also have their own meta. For example, split pushing is generally a pretty reliable tactic in solo queue, but that is especially good in lower ranks, where players are even less coordinated. It's very easy for a champion to snowball fast in a side lane and take over the game. Fiora is an OP split pusher, but if we're talking about low elo, she's a bit too mechanically intensive, as per our first rule. So we would say someone like Yorick or Trinimer would be pretty much better at those ranks. Before we get into the main course for today, I just want to give a quick shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and other content like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you want to check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just ready to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's get back to our picks for the best mid laners in EG Low. Well of course we'll be starting off in Iron. Our top pick for this rank is Diana. When we're looking at a good champion to play at the lowest level, you want to keep it pretty simple, and it doesn't really get much easier than Diana. Obviously, landing in Q helps, but even if you miss, just using E to dash to an enemy can allow you to ult and auto them to death. Usually, assassins are something that you really want to avoid in lower ranks, since they're arguably the highest skill floor class of champs. They tend to have difficult combos, and if you mess them up, they get melted in fights. But Diana doesn't have any of those risks, really. Her jungle clear is super fast and healthy, her dueling is pretty good early, and her team fighting is absolutely insane. She can even build super tanky, so you're both the form of engage and a really strong carry in fights. Taking us up a step from bronze, our pick here is Ramus. We talked earlier about how the meta can vary at different ranks due to the skill level of players. Well, one thing that lower elo players are really good at is getting caught out. Ramus is perfect for taking advantage of that. While he's definitely a tank, Ramus can easily assassinate carries that overextend while trying to farm. When it comes to team fighting, the general rule with Ramus is to jump on the enemy ADC. Their fast attack speed leads them to shredding themselves against your Thormail and W, but don't always tunnel the ADC just because they're the ADC. Remember, by taunting, you're not only trying to kill your foe, you're keeping them from casting spells and killing the rest of your team. Sometimes it's better to keep a mage from getting their ultimate off than just mindlessly chasing down a marksman. Next up in silver, our pick is Amumu. Dating all the way back to Season 1, Amumu has been considered the head of Bronzodia, aka 5 tanks that were said to be absolutely destructive in low elo, but pretty bad in higher ranks. But I think at this point, everyone realizes just how broken he actually is at all levels of play. For most of the season, as well as the last, he's consistently been the top rated jungler from Iron up to Master Plus. Hell, he's even a broken support now. 
Most people typically think of Amumu as a scaling champion, and to some degree, that's sort of true. His main focus is on team fighting, being as he has one of the best team fighting ultimates in the game. But he's not exactly weak early either. He has a super fast and healthy clear speed, and his early ganks are actually pretty OP if he can land his Q. When you hear the word tank, you probably think of a champ that's super durable and has tons of CC, able to set up fights for their allies to kill the opposing team. Amumu definitely fits the label, but you don't necessarily have to rely on your team to do all the damage. If you're building them correctly, Mumu does insane damage. His full combo, both his Qs included, can easily be enough to one-shot a squishy backliner. Honestly, with them being so broken, I don't know why more people aren't abusing him. Now, for gold, our pick is Mordekaiser. Honestly, it's kind of crazy how Mordekaiser has just been the most broken champion of Season 12, and Riot has completely ignored him. In fact, they actually buffed him midway through the season because he had a couple of patches where he was not god tier. He wasn't even doing bad at all, he just wasn't at the very top of the charts. Anyway, Mord is broken for the same reason half the other juggernauts in the game are. By definition, juggernauts are basically champions with the durability of a tank and the damage output of a bruiser. So like our previous entries, you're able to do the carrying while also not being so easily punished as the squisher champions may be. Their one weakness is that they lack mobility, so getting onto a target can be pretty difficult. But with summoner spells existing, that's a very easily solved issue. Flash is nice, but for somebody like Mord, with an emphasis on long extended fights, you get way more value out of Ghost. It allows you to run to a target with your ultimate, kill them, and then with Ghost duration being extended, you can go on to bring down the other opponents after. Our pick for the most broken jungler in Platinum is Master Yi. Master Yi is heavily considered a newbie type of champion, so a lot of people associate him with low elo. He's definitely popular in low elo, but he's actually not performing quite as well in the lower ranks as he does in Platinum Plus. And there's also taking into account smurfs that no doubt inflate his win rate down there. The reason for that is simple. Despite him doing most of his damage via auto attacks and having a relatively low skill floor, his skill ceiling is still really high. A lot of lower skilled players just spam abilities off cooldown, but a truly good Master Yi will use his Q to dodge crucial abilities like a TF Gold Card or Ash Arrow. It also helps that you can properly use his W for an auto reset just for a split second of damage reduction against hard hitting abilities and attacks. Moving up to Diamond, the absolute best jungler here is Fiddle 6. Honestly, Fiddle is so insanely broken that he wins the title of the most ELO inflating champion for both this season and the last one. Yes, that's even taking Seraphine into consideration. The reason for that is pretty simple. You're taking a champion with the best teamfight carrying capability into the game and putting them on a PvE role. You just farm camps, ults when it's up to gank lanes, and then carry teamfights super hard later on. Even if your team is pretty behind, odds are, you can still basically solo carry with a combination of having an AoE fear and ridiculous damage. Other scaling picks are at least able to be shut down by jungle invades, but with Fiddle 6, you can't even fight him, since he can easily heal through your damage, especially if he has a camp to drain during the duel. Due to the lack of sample size, it can be very difficult to look at what the best picks are for Challenger and even Grandmaster. So instead of looking at all three of the top ranks separately, we're lumping them together in a category that we'll call Master Plus. A lot of champions and playstyles do well at the top of the ladder, since players here are generally more aware and have better game knowledge, so they know how to play around different strengths and weaknesses. But overall, the champion that we find the absolutely most broken here is Belbeth. Like many other new champion releases, Belbeth was insanely busted when she first came out. And even now, after multiple nerfs, she's still cranking out big numbers. A lot of players have climbed way higher than they ever were able to reach before by abusing the Void Mommy for some free LP. Belveth is what happens if you take a champion with a hyperscaling damage output of Master Yi, but then give them a kit that actually has early game presence. On top of that, she's also extremely durable, able to jump right into fights without the risk of being blown up, and can even build tankier if needed depending on the team comps. Lastly, her ultimate is OP enough as it is, but her empowered form is just the icing on the cake. Giving a champ what is essentially a Zizarot portal on steroids allows her to take small victories and turns them into massive ones once she shoves down lanes and takes turrets after turret once already ahead. And that about wraps things up for our best junglers in every elo. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now that we've reached the end, comment your rank and what you mean down in the comments below. Maybe it's time for you to pour in more of your time into some of these picks. Or maybe let us know what you think are the best picks in each elo below. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.